Do you know that the author of Matthew's Gospel changes pronouns in order to convince his audience that Jesus... Did you know that I normally don't stitch people, but for the rhetorical purposes of my channel, which is Counter and Anti-Missionaries, I feel that I must, and it's not to certify with you, but to posit information to you that you may not have heard. All right, let's see it. Sorry, Dan, couldn't resist. I don't know if you know this, but all seven times that the Alma is used, it is used of a virgin, and it cannot be shown that she's not a virgin. So first, not only is that an argument from silence, it's not true. Exhibit A, Proverbs 30, verse 19. The way of a man with a alma, this is the way of an adulterous woman who eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wrong. Of course, you'll probably disagree with that interpretation because as an apologist, you have to. But it's not even true of the verse in Isaiah itself. After the prophecy of the virgin giving birth. So I approached the prophetess and she conceived and gave birth to a son. Now that word approached means they got to know each other, biblically. That's why after the encounter, she conceived and then gave birth. This wording is used a few other places, including Genesis 38, where Judah sleeps with his daughter-in-law, Tamar. Judah saw her and thought she was a harlot, so he said, let me come into you. And she conceived by him. Now you might say that was a different child because he had a different name. I'll get to that. But there's another problem with the word Alma. Obviously, that's the feminine form of the word. and The masculine form of the word is Elam. By the way, I'm sure I'm pronouncing these words wrong. I took Greek instead of Hebrew in college. 1 Samuel 17, the king said, inquire whose son the youth is. That's the word Elam, and it's referring to a son. 1 Samuel 20, there it is again, except it's translated to lad this time. So why is the feminine form translated to virgin, but not the male form? Let me explain why Betula or Betula is not a good word to use in Isaiah 7. Well, for one, it doesn't tell you the age, it just tells you the sexual status of a woman. So why couldn't the author have said young virgin, you know, like it does in Joel chapter 1? Like a virgin of her youth. Moving right along. So you mentioned it's Isaiah's wife, which, by the way, I don't know if you know, Jews are confused. Is it Hezekiah or is it Isaiah's wife that has Mahar Shalal Hashbahaz? So child is given two names to signify the fulfillment of two prophecies that will happen during his life. One to be called by his mother and one to be called by his father. But it is the same child. She will call him Emmanuel, for before the boy will know enough to refuse evil and choose good, the land whose two kings you dread will be forsaken. Then the Lord said to me, name him Mahar Shalal Hashbaz, which means quicken the spoil, hasten the booty. For before the boy knows how to cry out, my father and my mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria will be carried away. Isaiah was the prophet of the southern kingdom, which God preserved, as opposed to the northern kingdom, which God let fall. The prophet of the northern kingdom was Hosea. God told him to give his kids names that meant not pitied and not my children. Again, that was the purpose of these names, to signify what was going to happen in their lifetime, not what was going to happen 700 years later. There is a lot more I could say on this topic, but alas, I'm out of time. But good luck on that book you're writing.